Yo, yo, yo. I gotta react to this because I'm already knowing. Already knowing that this is about to be hilarious. I already know this is about to be hilarious. But I just want to start off by saying, Lakers fans, I'm sorry, y'all. I feel bad for y'all, bro. Like, I don't think I was going to beat Denver in the first place, but I mean, the, the coaching is just apparent and horrible. <laughs> he let Austin Reeves guard Jamal Murray one on one at the end of the game. Jamal had Austin Reeves guard Jamal Murray one on one in the game. No, let's not make let's not make anybody else on the court besides Jokic and Jamal beat us. No, let's have Jamal one on one for another game winner. Horrible coaching decision, bro. And and and, and I got more sympathy for y'all because I know what a horrendous coach looked like. I'm a Cleveland Cavs fan, and we have JB Bakerstaff on our sideline, so I know what a bad coach looks like. Trust me. I, I know exactly what that looks like. And I want him off my team. Just like how y'all want Darvin off our team. So I'm a bond with y'all over that. All right. I hope y'all get Darvin Ham fired and return. Can y'all hope that JB get fired? Thank you, bro. Let's get into this. And I'm sorry, I'm pausing early. But listen here. The way he was playing Torian Prince, like Torian Prince was the just the next coming of Kevin Durant the minutes he was getting, is nasty. It's very nasty. Torian Prince is not a starter. has never been a starter. If Torian Prince is a starter on your team, then there is a problem. Okay, and that is not even saying Torian Prince is a bad player, but he's a bench player. Play him off the bench. He's a good bench player. That's what he is. Why is he starting? You He benched Austin Reeves and D'Angelo Russell. He benched Austin Reeves and D'Angelo Russell. No, I'm not trolling. I'm not trolling at all. He benched Austin Reeves and D'Angelo Russell. I'm going to keep saying that because how do you bench your third or fourth best player? For Cam Reddish. And Toya Prince. How do you do that? And then you want to throw them in the lineup at the end of the season and then just magically expect them to just go ahead and kick it into playoff mode. How do you bench two of the players that you got to the Western Conference Finals last year? How do you do that? What sense does that make? Oh! My bad, my bad, y'all. My bad, my bad. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh! 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 This that that's that's what I was talking about. That right there. That hang on. Let me go back. Oh, Alright, this 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 is what I, this is what I'm talking about. This how Bro, one-on-one? -on -one? Bro, I don't care. You have to double Jamal. You have to get the ball out of his hands and make some type of defense or rotations. There is no way. You don't have... Oh, my gosh. You don't have Austin Reeves guard Jamal Murray one-on-one, -on -one, bro. You don't do that. At worst, you put Austin Reeves on Contavious Caldwell Pope. And you put... Maybe Rui on Jamal, but ideally you would want Anthony Davis on, even though he made the shot over Anthony Davis before, right? You still, that's still your best defender. And if you have him on him, then you have a higher chance of him missing that shot, right? And you just try to do Rui on Nikola Jokic just in case the screen comes, okay? And idealistically, I would just put Rui on Jamal and put, Rui or Jamal, Rui or Jamal, I mean, Rui or LeBron on Jamal. And then I'll have AD guard Nikola Jokic so you can guard the pick and roll. But, I mean, he just left Austin Reeves on the island with a complete isolation. It's so clear as day what they're about to do. 
Literally. Literally. They have to come over and help, and they don't do that. That's another option. Could have came over. You ain't part of the core, big bro. Here's the other issue, right? Here's the other here's the other issue, right? The front office, y'all up there, y'all don't know what y'all doing. Because y'all y'all got Russell Westbrook, right? And then y'all want to blame it on LeBron and AD. Okay, they wanted Westbrook, but guess what? They they don't make the team moves. Y'all do. And if you had any sense of basketball IQ up here, you wouldn't have made that trade. Never since then, it's been a failure since y'all traded for Russell Westbrook. Y'all should not have done that. And use Westbrook as a scapegoat and put him through all, all this bull. Y'all could have just not traded for him. Two, y'all fire y'all head, y'all, your head coach that y'all want a chip, that y'all want a championship with. Y'all fire him. Why? Oh, well, maybe we might get like a, a great head coach. You know, like somebody like really great, right? Just like Darvin Ham. Who's who's to to my knowledge, I could be wrong, has never had a coaching job. You thought Darvin Ham was going to fix this team? You fired your championship head coach to sign Darvin Ham. Oh, don't get me started on the Bucks. Don't get me started on the Bucks. Y'all and y'all in that category too. Y'all fire Mike Budenholzer to hire Doc Riff. Others me is that Darvin Ham is living off of this excuse of the team being injured, and that's the wasn't. reason why the team was not that's injured. That's the reason why my rotations and lineups weren't yeah, together. Yeah, that's not true. That's a blatant lie. I'm about to say, and we, we're gonna go through the team. We're gonna go through the players and all that shit. Want everybody to be fucking clear, and why nobody doesn't want to hear that fucking bullshit, nigga. This nigga Austin Reeves played all 82. You still found a way to put this nigga on the bench. This Seventy-six games found a way to put this nigga on the bench. LeBron AD played 71. Relatively Anthony Davis played 76. Your most injury prone player played 76 games. The starting four that contributed the most to y'all getting to the Western Conference Finals last year played over 70 games each. What what injury? Every everybody that was signed throughout the summer were supposed to be bench players. That's why they signed them. That was the problem last year. I didn't have any bench players. When the bench came in, it was horrible in the Western Conference Finals. I didn't have a bench. And to be honest with you, I can't even name somebody from last year off the bench. I really can't. Besides maybe Thomas Bryant. Who I think is getting no PT. 
And if he is getting PTs, barely any. D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves, LeBron, and AD played over 70 games. How? Gosh. What injuries are you talking about? Uh, listen, I'm a Cavs fan first, but I'm a Cavs fan first, but I'm definitely, I'm definitely, I'm definitely a Lakers fan second. Uh, I'm definitely, I'm definitely a Lakers and LeBron's fan second. More so a LeBron fan, but I do like the Lakers because you know y'all had Kobe and Kobe one of my favorite players, but yeah, like. Before he came to the Lakers in Minnesota, he wasn't starting in Minnesota. Before that, he wasn't starting in Brooklyn and Cleveland. He wasn't starting last time he was a starter was in Brooklyn back in 2020. And before that, in Atlanta, where he was playing 28 and 30 minutes when Darvin Ham was the coach when he was the assistant, even though, yes, it says that oh, Prince Torian Prince, Torian Prince played here in Cleveland, right. We were horrible, and he still didn't start. We were terrible. What season did that say? What season? Go back. 2020 and 2021. Now, hey, let's let's go and look at the Cavs record for that season. Do y'all see that right there? We were 13th in the East, 22 and 50 with a 30 win percentage, and he didn't even start on that team. But you benched D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves to put Cam Reddish and Torian Prince in the starting lineup. Where he was playing 28 and 30 minutes when Darvin Ham was the coach. When he was the assistant. Even though, yes, it says that, oh, Prince only played 27 minutes a game. He only played. No, that's because at the trading deadline, when he finally put him on the bench, then his minutes went down. But before that, Prince was playing 30 minutes a game. I want to be clear. A nigga who before this year wasn't starting, the year before that wasn't starting, both of those years wasn't re re receiving over 25 minutes. The years before that wasn't starting. Last time he started was back in 2020, still wasn't receiving over 30 minutes. Then <laughs> last before that, in 2019, he, he started on the Hawks. And even before that, he started for the Hawks again and playing 30 minutes. Tying on Prince has never been a starter receiving 30 minutes since his sophomore year when you was coaching this nigga. And yes, Gabe Vincent being hurt hurt us. Yes, Bando being hurt hurt us. Yes, Rui being hurt hurt us. But even when those people were available, you still found ways not to play them. My nigga, for people out there who do not know, I want- I Also, also, also number two, no, also, also, actually, he just said that. Jared Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt was, was available for game, for game five. Jared Vanderbilt, he, he played, he got a DNP. Brother, you don't have many options. How about you put Jared Vanderbilt out there and actually down the stretch, if he played in that game, you he you could have had him guarding Jamal Murray in the one-on-one. -on -one. I will live with Jared Vanderbilt guarding Jamal Murray in the one-on-one -on -one and then AD on, on Jokic at that point. You got two of, of, of the best defenders in the league guarding guarding their one and two offensive options. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is, yeah, this, this is sickening, bro. This is, this is, this is sickening. 
everyone's available to play. And this nigga ran fucking starting lineups of LeBron at point, Prince and Cam Reddish on the wing, Vanderbilt in AD. Darvin, when you was running those lineups, Rui was healthy, Reeves was playing, and D'Lo was playing, my nigga. All of them were there, and you still had lineups like that. In a Western Conference, when games are being... And LeBron at point guard, I don't even blame that. But the other players, why? Moments like these, stretches like these, hurt us immensely. Because now we have to pull ourselves out of the fucking gauntlet every single time, out of a hole that you... You are digging for us. The nail in the coffin for me, and I want to be very clear because I think I, I, I cannot reiterate this enough. When people sit here and say, oh, y'all are acting as if like, oh, oh, y y you, you can't sit here and just blame him. You, you, lost to the, you, you lost to the team that won a championship. I want to be clear, and I, I cannot reiterate this enough, though. People and, 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 and before Lowe says that, let me also be clear. Let me also be clear, too. Let me also be clear, too. Everybody who says that, oh, you got LeBron on your team. Why isn't he making the changes doing it? Because he's not a coach. He can't pick lineups. He can't he can't force plays to happen. He has to run a coach's play. You know that, right? Especially if he's not running a point guard. That's why a coach is important. And then even if you want to run, even even if you want to run certain plays and you don't run a coach plays, like one they have to practice the plays that the coach draws up at practice anyway. The number two on top of that, he's not putting the personnel out there that, that you can even make proper plays for. So it's just kind of like people have been complaining about Darvin Ham from Laker fandom since last year. Players have been vocally complaining about Darvin since this year, all throughout the regular season. I've already talked about this on the channel. There's quotes. This nigga D'Lo came out with a whole fucking article exposing this. <laughs> it's hard to see. So for fucking media pundits who, respectfully speaking, outside of narrative talk, you niggas don't know what the fuck is going on anyway. Respectfully, shut the fuck up. I don't give a fuck if you play 30 years in the NBA. Because you clearly aren't watching what the fuck we're seeing. Lowe's crashing up. It took until the end of the season entering the playoffs for me to start to see more people on the timeline talk about Darvin Ham's timeouts and his rotation in the starting five until the end of the year. We have been talking about that literally all season long. The nigga was starting Cam Reddish. When these players were picked up in the offseason, I and many other Laker fans assumed that this was going to be, at best, the 11th, 10th man on the roster. Not niggas who are starting. No, my nigga. I didn't think Torian Prince would ha start for basically half of the year, playing 30 minutes a game. No. No, I did not think Cam Reddish should be starting. No. no. You niggas, well, I'm fucking They're supposed sweaty. to be Holy bench shit. players. You niggas love to sit here and talk about narratives. So when AD had halves or fourth quarters where, oh, AD, he got the donut. Oh, my God. He did, he did the man the ball. He did the da, da, da. None of you all talked about how everything that we did for AD in the first half, first quarter, second quarter, we went away from. The sets did not exist. The players nope. weren't even prepared to run the offense through AD and the post nope. until midway through the season. And it was still bad. The cantina chicken quesadilla and it was still bad because it has I don't want a quesadilla bro chicken. I don't want a quesadilla bro and it was still bad and it was still bad it was still bad bro even when they were one in the sets it was still bad like like that's the thing like like people who don't actually like watch these games like y'all don't understand y'all just speak it from when y'all look at the box score and that's the problem AD's not going scoreless because most of the time he's having a bad night. There are some nights where he's having a bad night. I mean, everybody got a bad night, but they're not giving him the ball. The problem isn't AD's motor. It's not the problem is not that AD is this, that, or the third. The only legit problem is can he stay on the court? That's it. That's the only problem. And that wasn't the problem this year. So a lot of people got to really see that. Look, a lot of people got to really see that. The problem is the sets that's run for him. The problem is he's not able to utilize his whole offensive arsenal. Even in this series, he wasn't. He could put the ball on the floor. He could drive to the paint. He could rise up and dunk. He's not a five. He's a four. Stop playing him at the five. He's not a five. He didn't come into the league as a five. 
What do we do? And, 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 and I think he came into the league at 6'8 and grew to 6'10. So he definitely wasn't a five. Come on, man. Like, come on. So it's man. when I knew I seen enough with Darvin. Double overtime game with the Golden State Warriors. I want everybody to be clear. Vando's healthy. Rui's healthy. Christian Wood's healthy. Jackson, I mean, Max Christie's healthy. Jackson Hayes is healthy. Everybody is here except for Cam Reddish, which he doesn't need to be playing. In a game that went into double overtime and was decided by one point, Tarion Prince had a plus minus of minus 22, and Vanderbilt had a plus minus of plus 30. To further this point, when, they, we, when we made the rotation, and this was like all game long, first quarter, he starts, we lose those minutes he's playing, Vando and Rui comes in, we win those minutes. Second quarter, he comes back in, we lose those minutes by seven on points. When Vando comes back in, oh we win gosh. those minutes by 10 points by the end of the first half it became prevalent how does vando and and i need to see people talk about it. how was vando in game five receive no minutes he literally i don't care if he just came back from injury bro he literally could have helped y'all to completely contain jamal murray you could have switched him on and off of jamal murray and Jokic. And Michael Porter Jr. on top of that, to neutralize some, to neutralize somebody to some degree, and he gets a DNP. And Torian Prince is still on the floor. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Torian Prince. I would rather have a, a fresh off injury Jared Vanderbilt on the floor in times like that than Torian Prince why lebron can't come up and help in that situation you want to know why because Aaron gordon's in the dunker spot he's gonna get a oop thrown to him so lebron can't help why is lebron even on aaron gordon in that situation put torian prince on him because the only thing you got to worry about that point is him dunking the ball if he shoots a jumper you'll live with it So then that way LeBron can come over and help and bring his 6'9", 260 pound self over. You know, I'm tired. That a nigga who is 12 I hate a competitive culture. With two fouls, he's not playing well enough. And yet somehow we finished that first half up 68 to 63. Now you would think that a competent coach would be like, hey, you know what? I should probably go with the man who not only has provided the evidence this game, but all season long. Look at that. Last year that he is very pivotal to us winning. How? Is he not play? He's one of the greatest defenders in the league. He sparks most of their transition breaks because he gets stops. Oh my gosh. And you can switch more with him on the court. You can't switch that much with Tony Prince and Rui Hachimura on the floor. Not real. I'm sorry, Cam Reddish. They're not three and D guys. They're not. They're barely three guys. They barely can shoot threes, let alone defend. Second half starts, and this nigga Prince is still on the floor. Six fifty-five. Vanderbilt comes in for Tarion Prince. I want to repeat what I just said now. We were up by five points in the beginning of that third quarter. By the time this nigga came in, or by the time this nigga Prince exited the game, we were down by 14. Basically within a half of a quarter, we get the game back within three points within a matter of three minutes. Within a matter of three minutes, we were able to get the game back to three points. Tarion Prince had never been a starter before. You still started him. That had nothing to do with injuries. Austin Reeves was available all season long. You still put him on the bench. Even when Dilo was healthy, you put him on the bench. You were starting players that had never really started at any point of their careers on this team. They had nothing to do with injuries and everything to do with your decision making. And then when they, they wanted to trade Tarion Prince at the deadline, you said not to trade him. You did that. And, 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 and that is where I'm talking about the front office. It does not matter. Y'all make the decisions. Y'all y'all knew it wasn't working and y'all still kept it. Why? 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 You see it wasn't working. And listen, 
Torian Prince is a good role player, right? Good bench player. Emphasis on bench. Bench player off the bench player. Okay. He's getting subjected to this light because of Darvin Ham. Right. That's why. It's this is not to say that Torian Prince is a bad player. He don't deserve to be on the roster. But when you have a coach that that that, that literally is incompetent and doesn't like won't get it through his head that Torian Prince is not the next coming of Kevin Durant. Then you got to move on from him. You got to get him off your team. Or, you know what better yet? You want to know what's even a better idea than that? Fire the coach. Because that's your boo thing, nigga. You want that nigga on the team? You, whatever. <laughs> oh, and, and, and D-Lo had already outed you and said the reason why you favor certain people, not only because you coached them before, but also because they drive fancy cars. So then I looked it up and this nigga Prince drives a fucking Hellcat. And so that's probably the reason why every single <laughs> time you are on your knees for this nigga Prince. I'm tired of your excuses. The Nuggets outscored us by only 11 points. Oh! My nigga, that is simply excellent execution that's simply just you having x and o's and understanding what is necessary for what it takes for this team to win nothing more nothing less i am tired of the injury excuse so here we are next day man last night was a lot i was on stream watching the game live and um depressing to say the least but as we all know the different nuggets out at the los angeles lakers in five games one of the closest series i've ever experienced in my lifetime three of the four wins from the different nuggets were decided within 11 points three three games were decided within 11 points cu cumulatively and it really does speak volumes to how great this different nuggets team is especially in terms of coaching and execution how they can just make tough shots down the stretch jamal murray was amazing two game winning shots in this series at the buzzer he was sensational Jokic still put up Jokic numbers did fantastic. so look 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 all right right this is this is like last night him was the was the side of basket like your basketball mind where like oh yeah this narrative about to get pushed and it's about to get pushed nastily and then today's narrative and then today's basketball it's like all right let's be logical here right Fantastic things, even in a game in which he didn't play the greatest because of the amount of turnovers that he recorded, he still looked great and somehow finished a series averaging 28, 16, and, and 10. Oh he's my gosh. 93, 93, and 93, he was also fantastic. And on the other side, you know, as much as flat people are going to give Anthony Davis like all season long, the second part of the season, really, I would argue like 80% of the year, Anthony Davis was amazing. A little bit he was. Start. He played amazing. He was outstanding. Series. Kind of slowed down in the second half of game five because of a stinger on his on his right shoulder and left the right shoulder i believe but nevertheless still was amazing for him lebron game five sensational as well yes he was 39 years old looked as good as any other star in the nba that's probably not named Jokic so far in the playoffs and he was absolutely and just to be completely fair and transparent shooting nights weren't the greatest from Practically everybody else on both teams, D'Lo, Reeves, Rui, were kind of in and out off the bench for the Lakers. Anyone outside of really Tarion Prince couldn't make a shot. And I do believe some of the small nuances and nuggets about what the Lakers were lacking in terms of size, defense, rebounding, really ended up being the difference maker for this series at large, not just on a game-to-game -game basis. But, you know, you got to make your shots. You got to grab rebounds. You got to make your free throws. Can't turn over the ball as much. Can't have as many empty possessions. And here's the thing about the size, bro pause no diddy but like <laughs> like they they have it on the team it's just when you have a coach that if you especially during stretches where Jokic isn't on the floor and that kind of just wraps up a lot of the series it's, this is a team that you have to play near perfect basketball to win too many bad possessions will start to add up and that's will kind of just result into you losing the series so tip your hat off to the better team it was depressing to watch but now there's like much bigger things to kind of talk about in a much wider scale because now moving forward what exactly does this mean next for the lakers because boy there, there, there's definitely still a, a lot to kind of digest there so of course it's the lakers with lebron James, there's a lot of rumors and drama circulating around it. In the epicenter of it all is Darvin Ham. Again, in the intro, I ranted about it. I, I talked about it at nauseum at the stream on this channel, on my main channel, on Bleach Report streams, on Twitter, and I just cannot emphasize this enough. Darvin Ham is a bad coach. I, I don't want to get horrible this coach. That Not bad, games. horrible. We're now throwing Darvin Ham under the bus because we ended up losing to the defending champions, and in my opinion, a team that will inevitably win the championship this year.
I'm Fanny Texier and I'm a documentary filmmaker. I love being expressive with color because color has it's not that. and listen and listen here listen with that and that that whole thing bro listen 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 like i said i did not think the lakers were going to beat denver but you have lebron and anthony davis on your team and you do have some pretty comparable role players if you could put them in the right situations <laughs> oh, it should have been a competitive series it actually, it, there's no way it should have ended in five. I'm going to tell you right now why. Low spe I'm going to guess why Lowe specifically said that the game was going to go for Because I think he said five. I could be wrong. But I don't know. I'll just speak for me. I'm not surprised the game when it, the games went in five. is because they got that bonehead coach over there. Just like how in Cleveland, we have a very bonehead Okay, bro. That people have been complaining about Darvin Ham if you've been paying close attention about what he's been doing since the beginning of the season, after the in season tournament, towards the trading deadline, and all throughout the entire series from game one to game five, rotation, timeouts, scheming, defensive sets, offensive sets that are just completely evaporated at certain times. It's just been really, really bad to just listen to. And now there are articles that have been released going at a little bit more details about Darvin Ham throughout the season. I went over those articles in my last video that I upload on this channel so make sure you go check it out not going to touch upon it because not only did i talked about it in the rant but i've also talked about it several hey, yo, yo. okay several times but at the top of the list of things that the lakers must do next obviously is addressing darvin ham he, he has to go he is not a good enough coach to coach a team that has championship aspirations and i do believe when it comes to assigning a coach to a team that has championship aspirations you can't go out and get a rookie and uh, the lakers did that they made a really really bad decision in doing so they moved over for frank vogel they were supposed to get ty Lu because not only that's yep. what lebron wanted but i think just ty Lu was a better coach and than it darvin makes ham. sense and they went after a rookie head coach that was problematic for what reason and Ty Luke wanted to be here but they didn't want to let him hire his own staff how Ty Luke is an ex-NBA player and a good role player at that he's played with Michael Jordan he's played with Kobe Bryant and Shaq he's he's coached LeBron to a championship came back down 3-1 I should know I'm a Cleveland fan I'm a Cavs fan. I should know. And you don't give him the trust to hire his own staff? Are you serious? You don't hire him? You have LeBron on your team. He's formerly coached LeBron. I don't understand. Y'all really front office is garbage. Before I move on from Darvin, because again, I talked about him a lot in uh, the last video, so I don't want to touch upon him too much. Hey, my whole arm's going. Go. There's no other way around it. But there's a quote floating around right now where Darvin Ham, I have to find that quote actually, because that quote is actually, the quote is actually so crazy, I thought it was a fake quote. But then Dave McMenamin himself was actually reporting it. Like, it, like the actual Dave McMenamin account on Twitter was actually reporting it. Darvin Ham on record says, if you're coaching a team and one of your starters is like 10 games in a row, just shitting the bed, what are you going to do? And a lot of people are pointing to the fact that Darvin Ham is talking about D'Angelo Russell. Now that um. is brutally honest. And the reason why many people think it's fake is because it's crazy for somebody to even say something about this. But of course, with some of the information that was leaked from D'Lo early this year, as well as some of the quotes periodically throughout the year. I do think that Darvin Ham just had enough and he knew that he was going to lose his job anyway. And he might as well just speak his mind. And to Darvin, I oh, yeah, his job honestly, gone. but I have to just say this in response. A, shut the fuck up. Up. No one wants to hear your excuses, my nigga. Because if somebody had a 10 game bad stretch and that justified you benching them, A, that shows how fucking bad of a coach you are that you couldn't coach a nigga out of a 10 game slump, you fucking moron. And being more importantly, my nigga, you still found ways to give Tarion Prince and Cam Reddish starting minutes during the bad stretch <laughs> that Dino had, and them niggas sucked all year long as starters. Get off your knees, my nigga. You were on your knees for this nigga, Tarion Prince all year long it's been documented my nigga so spare me about a nigga having a bad 10 game stretch nigga if he has a bad 10 game stretch you still have reese you still have Rui, and you have lebron and ad nigga figure it the fuck 
out. <laughs> the fact that you thought that that was actually a credible excuse for the bullshit that you pulled, man, spare me, my nigga, spare me. And the reason why the last video is titled the way it is is because all season long, I heard zero accountability for what you were doing. It's always an excuse. Somebody's playing bad, someone's injured, when none of it actually maps out. None of it. So no, please spare me with the excuses. You know you're going to lose your job, and rightfully so. I hope you find another job in the NBA where you're able to build a little bit more sustainability, continuity in your coaching scheme and your philosophies. All right, man. I'm going to end it right there because I done made this video long by pausing and yapping. I'm going to finish the rest off, off this recording because I feel like this is too long already. But, yeah, um, I'm with y'all, man. They need to fire Darvaham and uh, y'all be with us, Cleveland fans. And, 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 and,